good morning dear students of class 11 science once again welcome to environmental science class we are dealing with the chapter ecology the second chapter in the last class we have learned about interdependence of species we have talked about mutualism right we have talked about competitions predations now today we will begin with <coughs> the topic energy flow or we can say flow of energy clear so today's topic is flow of energy okay so we all know that the ultimate source of energy in our ecosystem in our planet earth is the solar energy the energy that comes from the sun which is very very important right because it supports all the life present in our ecosystem clear so the solar energy which mainly reaches the surface of our earth right is usually trapped by the autotrophs or by the green plants but only a small amount of those solar energy are being trapped by the plant in order to perform the process of photosynthesis the rest will be reflected back clear so only small amount of those solar energy that reaches the surface of the earth is being trapped by the autotrophs or by the producer in order to perform the process of photosynthesis the process by which the green plants are able to manufacture their food clear so whenever the green plants perform the process of photosynthesis and whenever they manufacture glucose or food then solar energy will be converted into chemical energy and will be stored okay that means the solar energy trapped by the producer by the autotrophs will be converted into chemical energy and will be stored clear so that whenever the primary consumer will feed on the producer so chemical energy will move to the producers clear okay so those energy which is trapped by the producers or by the autotrophs now will move from one tropic level to the next tropic level tropic level we have already done in the previous classes clear so from one tropic level to the next tropic level the energy usually flows clear but a minimum amount of energy will be lost whenever the energy will be transferred from one tropic level to another tropic level clear so kindly keep this in mind that minimum amount of energy will only be transferred from one tropic level to another tropic level clear so therefore the percentage of energy transferred from one tropic level to the next is called the ecological efficiency clear so simple nothing is there okay simple solar energy is the ultimate life supporting system of the earth clear without the solar energy no one can survive so a small amount of those solar energy will be trapped by the green plants by the producers or we can say the autotrophs so that they can perform the process of photosynthesis so during this process the plant will manufacture food so the solar energy will be converted into chemical energy and will be stored clear and this energy will be transferred from one tropic level to the next tropic level and the percentage of energy which is being transferred from one tropic level to the next is called ecological efficiency and the loss of energy i'm telling you that whenever energy will be transferred from one tropic level to the next tropic level energy will be lost in the form of heat because all the organisms has to carry out different physiological activities in order to survive and in order to do that processes energy is required so energy will be lost so therefore the loss of energy is directly proportional to the length of the food chain clear that's most important thing okay so now in the given figure you can see the tropic level right this we have done only in previous classes so this is the first tropic level we can say occupied by the producer then we have got primary consumer we have got secondary consumer and we have got third or tertiary consumer clear so this will come afterwards so the pyramid of energy flow 
Readily become energy pyramid. So the pyramid of energy flow is the graphical representation of the loss of energy at each tropic level. Now, what do you mean by this? Because I'm telling you that whenever the energy will be transferred from producer to the herbivore, then the minimum amount of energy will be lost. And whenever the energy will be transferred from herbivore to omnivore, then minimum amount of energy will be lost. Similarly, when the energy will be transferred from omnivore to carnivore then also the minimum amount of energy will be lost so therefore pyramid of energy flow is the graphical representation of the loss of energy at its tropic level and in class 10 he have learned about the 10 percent flow of energy only 10 percent of energy will be transferred from one tropic level to the next tropic level and therefore the maximum number of energy will be stored by the producers clear because they are the one who are performing the process of photosynthesis clear so they are converting this solar energy into chemical energy and they're storing it so whenever the herbivore will feed on the producers then a small amount of energy will be lost all right so from herbivore to omnivore similarly the small amount of energy will be lost so this process will usually goes on okay so the different labels represents looking tropic label the different label represents different group of organisms that might compose a food chain all right so you can see the diagram over here clear you can see the diagram over here in the given diagram you can see the different group of organisms which occupy a different tropic level clear so at the bottom you can see the producers and at the top you can uh, just above the producers you can see the herbivore just above the herbivore you can see the omnivore and above the omnivore you can see the carnivore clear so the different label represents a different group of organisms that usually forms a food chain and what is food chain the process where one organism usually eat the another organisms clear so generally you know what is producers right which bring energy from the non living sources into the community then we have got the primary consumer the herbivore which will feed on the producers all right so primary consumers eat the producers which makes them herbivore in most community that we know usually then we have got the secondary consumers right which will eat the primary consumers and which make them carnivore right then we have got the tertiary consumers which eat the secondary consumers all right and in some of the food chains there is a fourth consumer label but rarely a fifth one you will find which i call the apex predator okay now the question comes why are energy pyramid shaped the way they are all right, these are most important questions why the energy pyramids shaped the way they are clear this is the most important questions now generally an energy pyramid shape shows how the amount of useful energy enters the each tropic level how much amount of energy that are useful will enter the tropic level because chemical energy is stored in the form of food by the plant by the process of photosynthesis clear and this energy will decrease when it will be transferred from one level to the another level that is when the energy goes from the producer to the herbivore then to the secondary consumer then to the tertiary consumer this chemical energy will decrease okay so the energy which is being taken up is used by the living organisms in order to perform different types of life supporting processes to perform different types of physiological processes and in that process a small amount of energy will be lost in the form of heat for example let's say in case human being we are performing respirations locomotion all right for it we require energy so a little amount of energy will be lost for that process in plants we can say there will be transpirations they are performing photosynthesis right so even during that process energy is being lost so a small amount of energy will be lost due to the different life supporting processes or the physiological processes which are being carried out by the living organisms all right and then we know that an average of 90 percent of the energy entering each step of the food chain is lost that's why we are saying 10 percent flow of energy that means among 100 percent of energy available in each tropic level only 10 percent of energy will be 
transferred from one level to another level. The remaining 90% of energy will be lost in the form of heat. Okay, so the consumers at the top of a food pyramid as a group thus have less energy available. So when we compare producer, herbivore, omnivore and carnivore, so carnivore will receive a little amount of energy as compared to omnivore. Omnivore will receive a little amount of energy as compared to herbivore and herbivore will receive a little amount of energy as compared to producers. Okay, so that is why the numbers are relatively few in most communities. The number of carnivores is to be very very few in number all right in case of the tropic level and eventually the amount of useful energy left cannot support the another level that is why the energy flow is depicted in the shape of a pyramid so after the carnivore or after the let's say tertiary carnivore or apex predator we don't find any organisms at the top you get confused. This is the producer, primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and in certain food chain, even after this, you will find the apex predator. But after the apex predator, you don't find any type of organisms because the energy that is available after that is not sufficient to support the life supporting processes. So that's why always we'll find the shape of a uh, the flow of energy always in the shape of a pyramid. Clear? Now, the pyramid gives a logical explanation as to why the earth can support more people if they at lower tropic levels. Clear? Now, the most important thing over here is to remember the flow of energy and the 10% law of energy. Okay? So, I am telling you that energy pyramid is the graphical representations of the loss of energy at its tropic level. The producers will capture let's say it will capture the solar energy and that energy will be utilized to perform the process of photosynthesis they will convert the solar energy into chemical energy that will be stored in the form of food clear now that solar energy will be converted into chemical energy and stored in the form of food by the help of producers now, when the herbivore will feed on the producers, then most of the energy will be lost in the form of heat. So, among 100%, 90% will be lost in the form of heat. Only 10% will be available to the next tropic level, that is herbivore. Then again, from the herbivore, only 10% of energy will go to the omnivore. Rest will be lost in the form of heat in order to perform different physiological functions. Similarly, when the carnivore will feed on the omnivore, only a small amount of energy will be available. Only 10% energy will be available, rest will be lost in the form of heat. That's why always we'll find the energy pyramid or the flow of energy always in the shape of a pyramid. Clear? And in most of the tropic level, we went, uh, let's say we went tertiary consumer, we'll find the apex predator. But after that, we don't find any tropic level because the energy that is available is not sufficient to support any life supporting processes clear this is the most important thing so remember the energy flow and the energy pyramid clear and for that you have to remember the tropic level and tropic level we have done already in our previous classes so go through it go through the food chain food wave all right now next one let's talk about the nutrient cycle or the biogeochemical cycle so what is nutrient cycle it is a concept that traces the flow of nutrient from the physical environment to the living organisms and again back to the environment. That means the nutrients which are present in the physical environment are being utilized by the living organisms, by the plant and the animals and again they are being given back to the environment. So this is called the nutrient cycle. All right. Now, the cycles are under the control, let's say it's under the direct control or indirectly control under the control of solar energy because solar energy is the most important one which supports all the life in our ecosystem. Okay, so every living organism requires a large number of nutrients for its survival, we can say. Okay, we can say like some of these cycles are let's say nutrients it can be carbon okay we have nitrogen phosphorus sulfur so we'll go through it one by one we'll go through the nitrogen cycles we'll go through the carbon cycles all right we'll go through oxygen cycles also okay so these cycles we will deal one by one but today we'll simply deal with the nitrogen cycles only but before that remember 
the law of tolerance. What do you mean by law of tolerance? It says that the existence, abundance, and the distribution of a species. One more time, the existence, abundance, and distribution of a species is determined by the levels of one or more physical or chemical factor. All right, by the presence of physical factor, which will fall within the range tolerated by that species. That means the distribution of the species, the occurrence of any species, the abundance of a species in a particular habitat, in a particular ecosystem is under the control of physical or chemical factor. All right, which an organism can tolerate or organism can resist. If the organisms cannot tolerate those physical factors or chemical factors, then they cannot survive or they cannot exist in a particular ecosystem. Clear? So those physical factors, those chemical factors has to fall within the range, within a label which the species can tolerate. And this will determine the existence, abundance and distribution of a species in a given ecosystem. Well, let's begin with the nitrogen cycles, which is one of the most important nutrient cycles in the ecosystem. All right. So nitrogen is essential for the synthesis of protein. Although 78 percent of nitrogen is present in the air, but it cannot be utilized directly by the living organisms or let's say by the plant for the protein synthesis. Okay, so these nitrogens it has to become soluble in order to be utilized by the plants. All right, it has to be changed into nitrate and ammonium ion so that it can be utilized by the plant in order to synthesize the protein. So this conversion of nitrogen into its usable form into soluble form into ammonium ion into nitrate is known as nitrogen fixation clear so what is nitrogen fixation i'm telling you that the air contains 78 percent of nitrogen but it is not available to the plant that means the plant cannot utilize those nitrogens directly okay so this nitrogen has to be changed into its usable form into nitrates into ammonium ion so that it can be utilized by the plant for the synthesis of protein so therefore the process of conversion of nitrogen into the usable form into ammonium ion into nitrate is known as nitrogen fixation so nitrogen fixation can be brought about by any one of the following means so what are those means all right by which means the atmospheric nitrogen can be fixed or can be utilized by the plant first one during lightning and rain nitrogen combines with oxygen and dissolves in water to enter the soil is nitrate so first of all nitrogens come in contact with the oxygen during lightning during the rainfall and it will be changed into nitrates okay so nitrogen is being converted into nitrates then nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soil like rhizobium, which I have done in your previous classes, it will convert the atmospheric nitrogens into its usable form, that is, into ammonium ion, into nitrates. Okay. Then burning of fossil fuels will convert the nitrogen into its oxides, which are therefore being converted into nitrates. Then industries under high temperature, under high pressure, nitrogen is converted into ammonium ion, which is then changed into ammonium salt. So these are the different means by which the nitrogen fixation can occur clear now mainly plant use the nitrogen taken in order to make the proteins animals on the other hand get the share of nitrogen by consuming living or dead organic matter so therefore in the ecosystem nitrogen is stored in all the organic matter so when a plant or animal dies or whenever these organisms will expel its waste products or excreta it is acted upon by the nitrogen fixing bacteria where it will convert this nitrogen into ammonium ion all right and this process is known as ammonification so the conversion of nitrogen into ammonia is known as ammonification or mineralization so remember what is ammonification the conversion of nitrogens by the action of nitrogen fixing bacteria into ammonia is known as ammonification now this ammonia is given back to the atmosphere as free nitrogens by the action of denitrifying bacteria so just look at the figure okay so mainly in the air you can see the fossil fuel emissions give nitrogens right there will be precipitations now due to precipitations the nitrogen present in the air will come back to the soil in the form of nitrates clear now those nitrogen fixing bacteria in the soils will fix those nitrogens into nitrates into ammonium ion 
okay and that will be utilized by the living organisms now whenever the living organisms will die all right whenever it will be acted upon by the bacteria then they will release the oxide or nitrogen into the air so you can see over here the process look over here we have we are using the fertilizers right and during the using fertilizers there will run off of those nitrogens all right into the water which lead to eutrophications there will be growth of algae in the water body okay or let's say those nitrogens can be consumed by the plant there will be plant consumptions clear now we can see the animal over here the animals will utilize those plant they will consume those plants and during this process you can see over here organic matter that means there will be excreta given out by these animals so animals will feed on the plant a lot because plants are using the nitrogen present in the soils and whenever the animals feed on the plants then the animal contains those nitrates, those ammonium ions present in the plant. Now, plant animals gives out those waste products, those excreta, clear. And during that process, the bacteria will convert those nitrogen into ammonia, which is called ammonification or mineralization. So, there will be formation of ammonium ion, okay. Then, from ammonia, there will be formation of nitrites. Then, there will be formation of nitrates, which is called nitrification. The conversion of nitrites to nitrates, it's called nitrification clear and these nitrates will be again utilized by the plant organ goes to the animal or it will be directly released into the air so nitrogen is being utilized by the living organisms but ultimately is also being given out into the atmosphere from where it is coming so this is known as our nitrogen cycle okay this most important one now impact of main actions on nitrogen cycles first one Burning of fossil fuel introduces oxide of nitrogen into the air, which causes acid rain. All right. So first of all, there will be formation of acid rains. Number two, anaerobic bacteria. That means those bacteria which can survive in the absence of oxygen. All right. They act on animal waste in livestock ranches from nitrous oxide. So anaerobic bacteria which act on the waste products of the animals, they will form the nitrous oxide, which is a greenhouse gas. And which will cause the global warming deforestation cutting down of trees leads to the release of waste or vast stores of nitrogens stored in the plant in cell such soil agricultural runoff leads to eutrophications where there will be growth of algae on the water body there will be algal bloom there will be growth of a vast number of unwanted plants on the water body clear so that this also leads to the growth of those unwanted plants or the algal bloom which is called eutrophications which will decrease the level of oxygen in the water body and lead to the death of aquatic plants and animals harvesting of crops removes nitrogen from the top soil making it infertile so these are the impact of main actions of nitrogen cycles clear so today we have just simply talk about flow of energy we are talking about energy pyramid and we have done about the nutrient cycles on the nutrient cycle we have simply talk about the nitrogen cycle so in the next class we'll continue with the nutrient cycles and we'll learn about carbon cycle we'll learn about phosphorus cycles and we'll learn about hydrological cycles clear so this much for today see you in next class thank you